Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's all music with Todd Ledbetter, and I just recorded my entire show, so I thought. And apparently, it didn't record. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, it says it's recording now, so I get to do it all over again. Uh, that's all right. I don't mind uh, talking about it. Um, the let's see. Let me uh, let me get things set up here so we can. Uh, get started once again uh it's kind of a weird it's happened to me once before which is it's like what the heck happened when i when as soon as i end the uh, session it doesn't uh it doesn't uh, render and i'm like what what did i do wrong oh well let's not let's not delve into that because we don't need to talk about those types of things what did todd do wrong but um <laughs> all right yeah let's get into it let's just get into it straight away Maybe I can make this one a little more concise and not not so long. I think I've droned on a little bit anyways, over a half an hour. Yeah, so this is 1990. We're in 1990 now, finally made it, which is cool. Uh, super excited about that. And um, we are going to do my top six picks. So here we go with number six. Uh, kind of an interesting choice for me. Uh, Depeche Mode Violator, I'm not uh, electronic music kind of guy I'm you know over the years when it was kind of popular there were some songs that came through that were okay you know whatnot whatnot you know but I never got into a lot of those bands when I would try because I thought oh that's cool because you know I like keyboards I've talked about that you know and a lot of electronic music is sort of you know synthesizers and things like that but there's something about the style that I didn't really care for, but not so much with Depeche Mode. They're definitely sort of in a different genre to me as far as electronic music goes. You know, they're they're um, they're a little more dark in a lot of ways, but also they have you know they have you know sort of uplifting sounds and and beats and things like that. But there's there's something about um, the singer who I can't ever remember his name. But, you know, just I really like him. You know, I like his melodies. I like the way he sings. I like his uh, stage presence, you know, and, and sort of his, uh, what do you what do you call that? Sort of um, heroin chic kind of look, I guess. I don't know if that's the right term, but you know what I mean? He, he, I think he was a heroin addict or is or, or whatever. Uh, but very, very cool. And as far as, uh, you know, choices in the 90s was a little tough, too. So... Uh, definitely like this album though. Depeche Mode is very good. Uh, Policies of Truth, uh, you know, just a cool lyrically. It's just really cool, you know. And that's what I like. That's one of the reasons why I like Depeche Mode is they're lyrically very good. And like some of the other electronic music, you know, you could take their lyrics and not even, not even care. Personal Jesus has another good song. Just sort of like what you know when we first heard that we're like personal jesus what the heck are they talking about but uh, a really good album super super cool i really do like the uh, uh this album depeche mode not a huge fan of depeche mode too much before this time uh you know but but this time and then after i i am i i still like them and I do like some of their older songs once I kind of realized, uh, kind of got an idea of what Depeche Mode was about. I can go back in their catalog and appreciate a lot of their, a lot of the stuff that I wasn't really into back when I was in high school in the 80s. And I would go to parties and there'd be groups of kids listening to the electronic music. And Depeche Mode was definitely one of the favorites of, you know, certain groups of, of kids uh, back back then in the day when I was younger. But, um, you know, this is 90s now. I'd been out of high school and they'd moved on to Pesh Mode and, and they really started to uh, do things that appealed to me. Uh, and that was definitely one of them. All right. So uh, it's kind of a different list, too. It's kind of all over the place. Um, let's go to my uh, my next. Number five for 1990 is the Blues Travelers. Yeah. So you go from Pesh Mode to the Blues Travelers. But a very cool album, though, uh, nonetheless. Uh, there's several notable things about this album. One thing I really like is I like the, I don't really know anybody's name except for John Popper, the lead singer, but I really like the guitar player. You know, I like his licks. I like the way he plays. It's a very, very up-tempo album. Uh, just really kind of funky. Uh, it's, 
they kind of transcend styles too. Even though there's blues in their name, they go through, uh, you know, they do a little bit psychedelic, a little bit blues, cut kind of rock and roll. Um, they kind of like go through a lot of different things. And I really, and John Popper is a very unique vocalist as well. Uh, and I, I know that he struggled with his weight. Remember how big he was? And then he got really big. But I think he's really trimmed down. Actually, I thought he died at one time. At one point, I thought he was dead. Some, I thought I heard that he had died. But maybe it was somebody else in the band or something. But uh, but he, and he's not. He's not dead. Uh, but uh, I like his vocal. He's kind of choppy on, with his vocal stylings, you know, and very quick with his syllables and, and words. Um, but it's, it's like his harmonica playing. I mean, that's really distinctive about the blues travelers, if you can remember some of their songs, he's got that, you know, harmonica that he just wails on. He's so good at it. And that's one of the things that really lifts this album. But it, it doesn't really, it, it lifts the album, but the album is already really punchy and really kind of funky. And it's got a lot of driving songs and that harmonica and that, that quick vocal style really adds to lifting this album up into my number five spot uh for uh, 1990 it's a really good album and uh, and there's just a, a lot of elements that i really like about it and it definitely the guitar player and the guitar licks that he's come up with very, to me it's interesting i like the tone of the guitar is very very big i like the tone of the bass i like the tone of the music the music uh of the musicians and and the the instruments that are they're coming out you know there's tonally it's satisfying to me as well so there's a lot about it that i really like uh so um yeah that's the blues travelers very very cool band and uh, i didn't i didn't really follow them much after um you know the next you know this album and probably the next one were sort of my favorites of theirs and sort of lost track uh although i know they're still doing i think their last album they released was in 2018 so you know they're still doing it which is very very cool all right let's see what did i do here let's uh let's get to number four and let me pull that up here so yeah this is another we're going we're just like darting all over the place as far as styles go uh which is okay because i like a lot of different types of music um and this is the cocteau twins i've talked about them before they made one of my lists in recent uh recent shows but uh heaven or las vegas is probably their most successful album and their 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 biggest album um really really like it um probably heaven or las vegas the title track is one of their uh, most popular songs uh, if you've never heard cocteau twins you know i would i would suggest you take a look and take a listen because they're very different uh, sometimes lyrically i'm trying to remember uh frazier was her name she was the singer uh, and she, um, she almost, she almost, you couldn't even understand some of the words she was saying, you know, and, and, uh, which was kind of cool, but she also, it's a, it's a real dreamy pop type style and, and her, she weaves her melodies in and out, her harmonies in and out of sometimes you understand what she's saying. A lot of times, most of the time, I dare say you might, you, you don't know what she's saying. I think they're Scottish, uh, possibly I'm trying to remember uh maybe not but uh def they're definitely not american but uh great great band love them uh, been a fan of cocktail twins for a long time many previous albums and many albums after that i still listen to and i and i i don't own a lot of albums or cds anymore but i used to and they, they were one of my favorites to own uh for sure at the time uh I wish I still had my album collections and my tape collections and my CD collections, but uh, just they're long gone <laughs> for whatever reason. Just mismanagement of my music collection and stuff. So uh, let's move on. Let's move on to number three. And this is kind of an interesting band, and I'm a little bit surprised that they're number three on my list uh, to a certain degree. But I kind of thought about it and I figured out why I like them so much. Uh, and, and this particular album and uh, the album after this too, but it's the damn Yankees of all bands. Uh, you know, they weren't around for a long time. 
but uh, they're basically a super group. Uh, if you look up here, you got Tommy Shaw from Styx. You know, he joined Styx early. You know, after a couple of albums Styx had, and and he helped to uh, really move Styx into a more popular, uh, you know, hit making machine. And then, uh, and I love his voice. I love his guitar playing. He's super great. Lo like Tommy Shaw a lot. Always have. And I also like uh, Night Ranger. I mean, you guys remember Night Ranger? Um, Kick-ass rock and roll band, man. They had some great, great songs. And Jack Blades was the bass player and singer for Night Ranger, and he's the bass player and one of the singers for Damn Yankees. Uh, so, and then you also got, you know, Ted Nugent. I mean, just blistering, there's blistering guitar leads in this uh, in this uh, album, both from Tommy and from, from uh, Ted Nugent. And I forget the name of this guy here. He's kind of an unknown drummer, but he, after this, he ended up joining uh, Leonard Skinner. So, uh, but he was basically unknown as far as, uh, you know, as far as super groups goes, he definitely wasn't part of the super group status, but the other three up front here definitely were. But, I, but the thing I like about this, this album in particular and this band and this group is that you've got, okay, a continuation of, of, Night Ranger, which, you know, I was saying I really like. And then you have an element of, of songs that sound like sort of like Sticks in a way because you got Tommy Shaw's influence, but almost like the way you wish Sticks would have gone instead of going into that funky Mr. Roboto, you know, weird period of their, what basically you know, broke the band up, I would say, you know, pretty much broke the band up uh, and kicked out Dennis DeYoung and all that, you know. I mean, I guess they, Dennis DeYoung got kicked out because he just wouldn't tour, I guess. But uh, but they weren't happy with what they were doing. Styx wasn't, you know, they didn't like the music they were doing. They didn't like those weird ballads all the time. They didn't like uh, the stage the stage show was huge contention with sticks and the theatrical of trying to put this like a theatrical like Mr. Roboto stage show going on and, and doing a whole, uh, you know, themed show with all that those elements and telling a story in their show. Most of the band hated that. And that was a Dennis Young thing, uh, you know, but it's hard to give up, you know, the cash cow, of what, which was sticks. But, you know, they made some choices and and, and uh, now they're back playing again. They've got a few new players and whatnot, and they're doing great. Love them. Super good. Actually, their latest album, I think it was released in 2017. So just a couple years ago, I think it's called Mission. Really good album. Super good Sticks album. So if you're a Sticks fan and you're a Tommy Shaw Sticks fan, it, you'll love it. It's super good. But this is this is the reason why I like this album and the Damn Yankees is because it's the Night Ranger and sort of the way you wish Sticks would have continued uh, and sort of did when you look at the Mission album that they've done. It's you know really good rock. It's not quite as progressive as Sticks can be, which I which is the element of Sticks a lot of people like as the progressiveness of them, but they sort of waned on that, you know, too. But uh, definitely hard rock. Tommy's Tommy's a rocker, and Jack Blades is too, and definitely Ted Nugent. And Ted Nugent just freaking kills it on guitar. Kills it. Love it. Whatever you might think about Ted Nugent as a person or whatever, um, I don't really care. Uh, music, his talent is undeniable for sure. So uh, Damn Yankees made my number three list in 1990. So that is that. Let's see. Uh, so that brings us to number two. Number two. Great album. I think these guys showed up in my list recently too uh, for a couple, whatever, 89 or 88 or something like that. But uh, Queensryche, Empire, probably their best album. Probably their most popular album. Uh, Jeff Tate's voice is still just killer. Uh, great, great kind of heavy metal, you know, rockin' album. Uh, Jet City Woman was probably one of the most popular songs off this album as far as the top 100 type, you know, goes. Uh, and then also uh, Silent Lucidity, too, which is a good song. I like it, but it's not like a rocker. But um kind of freaked me out, though. When I Whenever I hear it, I don't really like listening to it because you get to that point towards the end of the song, uh, like the last 
kind of they break it down a little bit and then uh you know i can't really remember the video exactly but it seems like it was something to do with a hospital bed and somebody in it and they they like, couldn't see and couldn't couldn't talk and couldn't hear and and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting it mixed up with like a, a Metallica video too. And, and maybe maybe some elements of those two videos were the same, but there's a point where I just seems like I remember where this like person that just couldn't like move and he was just stuck in bed with and couldn't talk, couldn't hear and couldn't see uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, they break it down, the song that kind of gets broken down. And then, and then all of a sudden you hear this whisper, help me. <laughs> And that freaks me out every time, man. It's just the way that they, the way that they do it, you know, and the music and it just, it just like sets you up and it just gives me chills and, and it creeps me out, you know, just to think of the situation of this, you know, image that I still have in my head, whether it's right or wrong, uh, if I'm mixing it up with another video or not, but uh, yeah, I just, I hated that part. I don't even like listening to the song because of that help me part. Uh, but that, but nevertheless, it's a good album. It's a, it's a good rocker. And Jeff Tate is just a screaming vocalist, very unique, very one. I mean, you know, he's, he's a, just a great, great vocal. I want to compare him with, with people, you know, like, like Freddie Mercury or, uh, uh, you know, Iron Maiden, whatever his, the singer's name is. I'm drawing a blank right now, but kind of a little closer to Iron Maiden really in my, in my ear the operatic a little bit but he can he can freaking hit some notes man it's been a great range so that's my number uh two for 1990 queen's reich uh definitely empire was a good album and uh definitely probably their best-selling album i'm sure all right that brings me to number one and i am so happy to say uh one of my favorite bands from the 90s alice in chains with their facelift album super good album i like it a lot there's a lot of reasons why um you know uh this was probably my inter uh no no i, I was definitely getting into alice in chains by this time because i'd already listened to uh had a couple other uh, one, at least one other album that i think i talked about uh, already but this one has like man in the box which is a great song um and it's just got those lyrics you know between uh what is it lane Stan stanley and and cantrell jerry cantrell uh and it's got you know the way they harmonize um is super cool i mean very unique too and you don't really hear that uh harmony harmony range you know where you know there's there's a certain you know you know steps you know uh, as far as <laughs> i'm uh, I wish I was more smart with theory, but you know, you got your, you got your, your seconds and you got your thirds and you got your fifths and you got your sevenths. And there's a, there's a range where they like to harmonize. I don't know if there's fifths or thirds or whatever it is, but it's a little different. And, uh, and you don't really hear it that much, but, but Jerry Cantrell and, and uh, Lane Stanley uh, did a great job and they still do a good job, even though Lane had passed away a long time ago. Um, they, Jerry does a good job with another guitar player singer that helps out with the vocals and they're still doing it and they, they still maintain that sort of sound. Um, it's a, uh, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a mid tempo album, you know, really. And a lot of Alice in Chains is kind of mid tempo. I mean, if you compared that to Queens Reich as far as tempo or even blues travelers, even though they're a different, really different style, Queens Reich is probably more of a closer, uh genre comparison but queen's rex got a little more up-tempo rocking songs but the but this is more of a kind of chugging along mid-tempo sort of album i wished it was had a little more diversity in it but that's just kind of alice in chains isn't it that's just the way they kind of are and they do it well i really like um jerry as a guitar player and his uh the licks that he comes up with uh as far as like uh guitar guitar uh licks and then his lead lead playing you know he's a fabulous lead player i mean just amazing guitar player so uh you know just all those things combined you know give uh allison chain's facelift my number one uh pick for 1990 um let me see i just wanted to kind of explain a little bit why these are my picks 
in a, in, in a way as to compare them with what else was kind of available for me to listen to through the 90s. And I'm not going to go through everything because, you know, there's a lot. But, I mean, you're looking at things like, you know, just bands that I didn't really get into because I didn't like songs I heard previously or it just wasn't a style that, that attracted me or just, you know, never had the opportunity to get into them or whatever. There's some bands I don't even recognize. But, you know, um, the Pixies, never got into them. Sinead O'Connor, not, not a big fan. Uh, Sonic Youth, hate Sonic Youth. Can't. I tried with this album, Goo, that they had in 1990. I had it. I had it on cassette tape. But uh, I tried. I listened to it so many times. But there was just nothing that, you know, really got, I, I could really latch on to that I felt like that was a good. I just didn't like Sonic Youth. Some people think they were the greatest thing in the world. That's why I would keep trying. Like, okay, what am I missing? Couldn't figure it out. Uh, you got the Black Crows, uh, Shake Your Money Maker. That's a definitely a good album. Probably would would be definitely be in my top ten for sure. Scorpions, Crazy World. You know, I was kind of like off of the Scorpions trains by the ninety. You know, I was it was more of an eighties Scorpions guy. You got the Breeders. I don't I don't never got into the Breeders. Primus never liked anything I heard from them. You know, they they got that funky bass. You know weird vocal i just don't like that style uh it's not it's not me uh you know paul simon had his rhythm of the saints which is which was a good album uh you know kind of off the heels of his uh album previously where where we talked about and uh he was on my list actually where he had all those you know south african rhythm rhythms and stuff like that uh graceland good album so it was kind of off the heels of that so and it, there was some success here with that but uh i didn't really follow up with that album uh, you know, the Sunday's pretty good, but uh, definitely not top 10. Midnight Oil, definitely not. You know, a couple good songs back in the day, but, you know. World Party, a couple good songs, liked them okay, but not not a favorite. And then you got like ACDC's Razor Edge. Even though I'm a huge ACDC fan, you know, in the 90s, they started to sort of, you know, sort of fade. And they almost became like a little bit jokey in a way. People, people had sort of a weird, a lot of people kind of got weird about ACDC, but they managed to like break through and work through that and they became you know pretty much the you know rock and rolls you know treasured icon you know in in my book you know they, they worked through that i mean there's such a long career you know but uh i gotta stop saying you know you know uh but then you know these are the bands that the, the and the albums that i'm kind of got got my list kind of up against you know you've got good bands you got good like robert palmer palmer's or not robert palmer robert plants um manic nirvana good album uh just not a lot that i really love i you know mother love bone i tried to like them didn't care for them king's x never really got into zz tops recycler i love zz top um but you know at the time recycler that style of music i was kind of getting away from uh you know, uh, as far as, you know, it's like their 70s, 70s stuff is one thing, you know, and then you get into their 80s MTV stuff and it, it almost like they took it too far in a way. And then they've come back and they've done some great albums. But even though I go back and I'll find listen to like Sharp Dressed Man and some of these, you know, uh, songs that they did in the 80s, they're good songs and I really like it. And I like, you know, they just there's easy top and they have their thing and they've they've managed you know, they've weathered the test of time. They've got a lifelong career and they, they're definitely a, a, one of my top bands. I really like them a lot. Just not not for this album for this year. And you got Posies, you got Susan Vega, NXS, George Michaels, The Flaming Lips, Lynch Mob. Just not bands I was into, you know. So these are the types of things that I'm up against. Concrete Blonde. Uh, my bloody Valentine. I mean, you might like some of these bands. I just, I have, I could never, I couldn't tell you one song from my bloody Valentine. I have no idea. Just never listen to them. So, you know, that's why, you know, I'm picking songs. My fa that's why they're my favorite from this particular year. Uh, and really this is not even that great of a year. If you ask me as far as the styles of music that I like, well, my, my top four, definitely are up there pretty good um you know maybe i i could probably move damn yankees down and put cocteau twins probably up one uh you know if i thought about it a little bit a little bit longer 
Uh, I might do that. But uh, other than that, uh, that's my list. You know, Blues Traveler is not a life. You know, some, I'm not a lifelong fan, but but this album was good for this year. Depeche Mode, you know, as I already explained, how wasn't a fan, more of a fan now and with their you know later works, and I definitely like as far as electronic music goes, they're my pick for for that. So uh, that's it. Uh, number six. Depeche Mode Violator, number five, Blues Travelers, their self-titled album. Four is Cocteau Twins, Heaven or Las Vegas. Great album. If you haven't heard of the Cocteau Twins or never heard of their music, check them out. They're different, but you may like them. Uh, Damn Yankees. Queensryche was number two with The Empire, probably their biggest album. You know, gotta love, gotta love Je uh, Jeff Tate. And then Alice in Chains, Facelift. And then, you know, in a couple years, I think 92, they released Dirt. And just, you know, the rest was history with them. But uh, yeah, that's it for uh, for 1990. We'll see you uh, probably tomorrow with 1991. I appreciate it. Uh, my name's Todd Ledbetter with All Music. Uh, if you would, if you got this far and you're still listening to me drone on, uh, like this video, um, subscribe, and click the notification bell because if you don't click the notification bell, it's like you're not even subscribed. So if you're not subscribed, then you don't know when I'm putting out new videos. So if you don't know when I'm putting out new videos, you're not gonna watch them because you won't know I have them. Also, if you go down into the description, oh, and also let me know what you think about these albums too in the comments, you know, or if you'd like to pick out your own top six, or if you like any of these that I like, or if there's something I missed, you might just bring it up and let me know so I can go, oh yeah, I remember that one. Uh, and uh, down in the description, also there's some other ways that you can help the channel too, if you have any interest in that. So uh, I wanna thank you guys for watching today and we'll catch you tomorrow because I'm releasing uh, pretty much every day, new uh, new shows. Um, we'll get a little further into the 90s, and we'll probably have Jeff Caston on back for an album review from the 90s, as soon as we kind of get into it a little deeper and figure out what we want to do. And then I'm still uh, just the way all everything's crazy right now. I haven't been able to hook up with Tracy, and we'll get that Led Zeppelin 2 review done too. But that'll be coming up, so I, I'm really looking forward to that. So hang tight. But in the meantime, I'll be releasing videos every day, and we'll, uh, we'll continue on. So thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.